Right then guys, it's PSL here for the first of two videos that go alongside my mammoth all 10 seasons of my team career mode video. If you haven't watched it then you'll be out of the loop when it comes to this video, but long the short of it, my team won every single drivers and constructors championship from the fourth season onwards. In season 9, Mick Schumacher won the drivers championship driving for my team and I had the best engine, every car upgrade and every facility upgrade. So for the final season I got Mahavira Gunathan into the team, just to see how well he could do. In previous seasons I won the drivers championship and so did Kimi Raikkonen, albeit with some help from me, George Russell, Jack Aiken and as previously mentioned Mick Schumacher. Tatiana Calderon had a chance in the 8th season and whilst she came close, ultimately I had to take the title that year just to keep the team streak going. Even still, she is one of the lowest overall drivers in the game, yet she still finished on the podium in 7 of the 10 races and finished 3rd in the championship, beating the likes of Leclerc, Norris as well as Danny Kvyat in the seemingly inevitably good Alpha Tauri team. At the end of Season 9, Ragunathan was 50 rated, 12 lower than the next worst driver which was Calderon. Some reaction training at the end of Season 9 along with the maxed out personnel facilities put Ragunathan up to 66 rated and then some pre-season training put him up to 76 rated. Which honestly still isn't great, but it's marginally better than Callum Eilat and Antoine Hubert are as standard. He also wouldn't visually load in after the pre-season training. Somehow I've made him so good that the game refuses to accept it and doesn't even recognise him anymore. So this is almost as good as Ragunathan can get and he's in a maxed out car which is by far the best on the grid. I qualified sick for the Dutch Grand Prix which is bad, but I've noticed that the game gets harder as you progress through the career. I don't know if it's a glitch or some game design choice with good intentions, but it's weird nonetheless. I overperformed in the first two seasons with the difficulty at the same or a higher level than it was for this final season. Regardless, Mick Schumacher and Jack Aiken for Racing Point, two of my former teammates as well as world champions, qualified first and third. Lance Stroll split the two of them and in fourth and fifth is both McLarens. Then it's me and then Kvyat and Verstappen separate me from Ragunathan. Ninth place though honestly isn't horrific in any way, more difficult AI or not. I can't really claim much superiority over him. I mean Ragunathan beat Lando Norris in a Red Bull and Hamilton in the Mercedes. He really didn't do that badly. Off the start I moved up to 5th as I got a better launch than Carlos Sainz and by the end of the opening lap I passed his teammate Sergio Perez as well for 4th. I did squeeze him slightly which cost him a position to his teammate and dropped McLaren as a whole a fair way back from the top 4. Possibly I was a touch over aggressive when passing Perez but honestly I don't really think what I did come the end was massively consequential to how the race played out. At the start of the second lap I got past Aiken into the first corner just with Slipstream and ERS. Thankfully I've got the Honda engine which this year is more powerful than Mercedes which helped me to get ahead of Aiken and his pink Mercedes. It also means I've overtaken three drivers in just over a lap, which just goes to show how quick my team's car is relative to the rest of the pack. Ragunathan meanwhile did well off the start, getting a much cleaner getaway than Verstappen to pass him way before the braking zone for the first corner. He even ran side by side with Kvyat in the mighty Alpha Tauri for a while and whilst he didn't make the move stick he was a genuine threat. I don't know if there was something wrong with Aiken's car but he was unusually slow especially since his teammate was still leading the race and able to hold off Stroll. However, both McLaren drivers overtook Aiken and then Kvyat went for a move that dragged on throughout the final sector, but Ragunathan seized the opportunity and passed both of them at the same time. Sure he had DRS and a Honda engine, but he was able to hold it around the outside of turn 1 on Kvyat and whilst Kvyat wobbled on the inside of the corner and backed off the power to prevent spinning out, 
Ragunathan kept his foot in it and bolted into sixth place. It was quiet up at the front for me because I was just about able to keep within DRS range of Stroll, but I wasn't ever close to passing him and Stroll wasn't close to getting in front of Schumacher either. So it was just a line of three cars running around lap after lap after lap, never changing position. Once Schumacher pitted and he was one of the first to fit new tyres, it allowed me to properly attack Stroll. Since we both have good cars powered by Honda engines, there just wasn't the speed difference needed to overtake him. But once he lost DRS by not having Schumacher in front of him, I was able to pass Stroll for first place, but even then, it wasn't a dead easy move. The pit phase was bad for Racing Point as firstly, Aiken and Verstappen pitted at the same time, but Aiken was held in his box to let Verstappen go by, meaning Aiken dropped yet another place. Schumacher meanwhile threw away what otherwise would have been a likely victory. He stopped so early that he went on to hards, which was a mistake, as me and Stroll came in just three laps later and went on to the grippier medium compound tyres. The early stop also put Schumacher out into traffic and he was stuck behind the Renault of Nicholas Latifi. Schumacher still did well enough to keep ahead of Stroll but not me as I sailed off into the distance for the race win. As is unfortunately often the way with races at Zandvoort, that was pretty much it. Ragunathan was still in sixth after the pit stops had played out and it took nearly 10 laps for Stroll to pass Schumacher by which time I had pulled out a 9 second lead. It was actually a simple mistake getting on the power too early on the exit of the chicane in the final sector that allowed Stroll to pull alongside and get in front of the racing point for the banking onto the start finish straight. Signs opportunistically pulled alongside down the main straight but it was the medium tyres which he opted for unlike Schumacher that meant he was able to brake later into Tarzanbokt hold his car to the outside of the corner and get better traction on exit to pull in front and take the final podium place. Some information on Stroll, they seem to have an issue. That was music to my ears, especially since, whilst I was able to pull away from Schumacher, me and Stroll were setting more or less identical lap times. It was far more damaging than just that though, since he became a sitting duck with Carlos Sainz the first to get past him. On the next lap, Mick Schumacher climbed back up into a podium position as he too passed Stroll. Again, on the very next lap, Sergio Perez got in front of Stroll as the Canadian completely lacked straight line speed. Even Ragunathan got in on the action as he was the first to pass Stroll on lap 34 with Stroll's teammate also getting in front during that lap. But unlike Ragunathan, he had to complete the move in the corners. That's pretty much the end of the race. Well, Nick De Vries for Williams and Esteban Ocon for Ferrari both retired at the end of the race and in an almost identical fashion. But I won the race by 12 seconds with Carlos Sainz Still, after all these years, still at McLaren, he finished in second with defending world champion Mick Schumacher for racing point in third. Sergio Perez crossed the line in fourth and then is Ragunathan in fifth, which is almost miraculous. I know given that he has the best car with the best engine and I won the race with that exact same car. Given all of that, he didn't really do that well. Also, the extensive boost to his attributes had a massive amount to do with how well he did, as we'll see in the future races. But honestly, who would have expected him to do that well? Sure, he qualified in ninth with the best car, but he got up to 6th on genuine effort, and only the final position was sort of gifted to him. For the rest of the season, Ragunathan didn't have the benefit of his pre-season boosts, meaning his rating plummeted from 76 to 65. In time for the Spanish Grand Prix, I gave him some racecraft training to up him to 66 overall. This is where we see the real Ragunathan come to the fore as whilst I won the simulated Spanish Grand Prix, he ended it in 19th. 
Ragunathan entered the Monaco Grand Prix even lower rated than he did for the Spanish Grand Prix as he was at 65 overall. Which, let's not forget, is 15 higher than he would be were it not for the Spec 3 personnel facilities. It's also worth noting that at the start of my career mode, Ragunathan was 45 rated. So in actual fact, he's 20 overall higher than he starts out as. To be fair though, at the end of the 6th season of my career mode, Ragunathan had risen to 55 overall, despite not taking part in a single race. So if I wanted to give him his best chance, I should have done this during the 6th or 7th season of my career mode, but the fact of the matter is, he's 5 overall higher than he is by default, plus another 15 on top of that, and he's in the car I'm winning with, so I can't really do much more for the guy. To be fair, in a simmed Monaco Grand Prix, I didn't win, as the inevitable Alpha Tauri front-running pace finally came into effect with Stroll winning, but I still finished in second and ahead of Kvyat. Meanwhile, Ragunathan finished in 15th, beating Max Verstappen in the Red Bull and Charles Leclerc in the Ferrari. Sounds impressive, and it sort of is given the overall those two have, but Ferrari were destroyed by the performance update and Red Bull started this season as a mid-table team. Ultimately, 15th is 15th, so it's still far from a great performance. The next race I took part in was the Austrian Grand Prix and in qualifying, I took pole by 3 tenths of a second over my former teammate Aiken in second and then it's Pierre Gasly in a surprise third and sharing the second row with Carlos Sainz. Stroll and Kvyat for Alpha Tauri qualified in 5th and 8th respectively, which is pretty poor considering how quick they've been so far this season. But it's not as poor a performance as Ragunathan's, who was 20th. That means he was only quicker than the two Haas drivers, he was the only non-Haas driver who was unable to do a sub 1 minute 2 second lap time, and he was 1.3 seconds slower than me in the same car. Thankfully, Ragunathan started off the race quite well as he got the power down more cleanly than Giovinazzi to pass him off the starting grid. And he was able to find some more space around the outside of Turn 1 to pass both Ocon in a Ferrari and Raikkonen in a Mercedes. It mostly fell apart by the second braking zone as Raikkonen used a giant empty space on the right hand side of the track, a space which Ragunathan didn't use to dive bomb plenty of people including Ragunathan. And on the entry to the third corner, Giovinazzi pulled alongside, and as Giovinazzi had the outside line, he was able to accelerate out of the corner sooner and re-pass Ragunathan. Even still, my teammate did keep track position over Esteban Ocon. The race went quiet for a while, well it did towards the back where Ragunathan was anyway. That was until Leclerc retired with a blown up engine. That's because Ragunathan gained two positions out of that as Norris hit the back of the slow moving Ferrari down the start finish straight. It's a 50-50 instance since Norris moved off the racing line and into Leclerc, but Leclerc also swerved in front of him. Either way, Leclerc eventually pulled off circuit and retired, with Norris following suit despite only appearing to have front wing damage. Norris did about two thirds of a lap before eventually stopping the car, weirdly doing most of a lap but not going to the pits which were only a couple of corners away. His lack of pace caught out Kimi Raikkonen who crashed into the back of him, and whilst Kimi didn't retire he did have to pit earlier than originally planned. I was going to say that Ragunathan gained a third place off the back of that, but he, completely unbeknownst to me, had already got back in front of Raikkonen. Sounds impressive, but honestly, if you watch my all 10 seasons of my team career mode video, you'll know that Raikkonen wasn't that great in the latter seasons. But it is understandable, given that the Finn would be 50 years old at this point. One pass I did catch was a move Ragunathan made on George Russell. I know in simple terms he's just overtaking an Alfa Romeo post the performance patch as well, which didn't help Alfa Romeo at all, but... That is Ragunathan, the worst driver in the game boosted up to be only one of the worst, overtaking George Russell. By the end of the career, Russell rose to 88 overall and was the 4th best driver still racing. 
So respect to Ragunathan for passing such a great driver, even if the odds were stacked heavily in his favour. Nicholas Latifi was the next to leave the race as he had an engine failure, but he was able to go down without taking anyone else out along the way. It's also another position gained for Ragunathan. He even made the right strategy call as he jumped Nick de Vries in the Williams by pitting one lap earlier, proving that even in clear air, Ragunathan's race pace isn't horrific. I haven't talked about the head of the field much because I romped away from all of them instantly, but a lot happened between all the cars from 2nd down to about 9th. Lance Stroll had his race wrecked, which meant he lost what would have been a surefire 2nd place, as he had overtaken everyone ahead of him except me. He lost a bit of his front wing on the back of Ocon's Ferrari as Ocon was slowing to enter the pits. Stroll then limped around for a lap to get back to the pits himself and bunched the rest of the front pack up. So then on the next lap, Gasly did the same thing Stroll did on the previous lap, except the Renault driver sustained more wing damage than Stroll did. Gasly then stopped for a new front wing and since all of this occurred after they both stopped for new tyres, they ended up a pit stop down on the drivers they were once racing with. Stroll ended up down in 16th, from 2nd place and he opted for a 2nd set of mediums. Gasly was 2 places further down the order in 18th but did at least go for the fastest compound of tyres. Their crashes meant Ragunathan was elevated up to 10th place. All Ragunathan had to do was hold position and he'd score a point, albeit a very luckily earned one. Of course he didn't make it easy for himself though and he blew it when De Vries passed him on the inside of turn 3. That's only because Ragunathan wasn't quick enough to be close enough to anyone to get DRS, but De Vries could keep up with him and get DRS to overtake him. Thankfully at the 11th hour Ragunathan was able to return the favour with the 100 performance Honda engine to take back 10th place and score a point. Frankly, a phenomenal achievement and whilst it pales in comparison to what I did as I won by 18 seconds over Kvyat in 2nd and then Sainz in 3rd, that's a genuine points finish for Ragunathan. Sure, the craziness of the race helped him enormously as 3 retirements as well as Strolls and Gasly's crashes means that in real terms Ragunathan should have finished in 15th. Regardless, he scored a point, and you can't take that away from him. I simulated the British Grand Prix and won by 9 seconds with Kvyat, then both McLarens led by Sainz, and then the other Alfa Tauri of Stroll in 5th. Ragunathan meanwhile ended the race in 19th, beating both Haas and, for the second race in a row, Nick de Vries. Next was the Hungarian Grand Prix, which I did, only because the simulated races in the previous seasons often threw up some unusual results. So I wanted to see if that would be the case, even if I did the race myself. Instantly, it was at peak weirdness, as God knows what happened in qualifying since, by this point in time, the three Ferrari-powered teams had the three worst cars yet. Charles Leclerc was the second fastest in qualifying, and George Russell for Alfa Romeo set a frankly impossible time. He was at least 6.5 seconds faster than everyone else. But then again, Aiken was 3rd and his teammate Schumacher 14th, so nothing really made sense this session. I was 16th and thankfully just ahead of Ragunathan. But this shows just how much the AI difficulty varies from track to track, never mind how it gets more difficult as seasons pass. Zanvoort gradually went from dead easy to quite challenging in qualifying, Austria was dead easy even in the final season, and then you've got Hungary where I was almost as bad as Ragunathan. It was intermediate tyre conditions for the start of the race which meant I got off to an awful start, dropping behind my teammate. That was until the end of the first lap when I repassed him around the outside of the second to last corner. That's not really a usual overtaking spot, but it shows just how slowly he was going. A dry track didn't suit me on Saturday, but 
for whatever reason, I was much more competitive on a wet Sunday as lap after lap, I was passing people. It was so easy to keep up with everyone and the only ones that were hard to pass were the Alpha Tauri since they also have Honda engines so I didn't have a power advantage over them. I was even able to set the fastest lap of the race multiple times while still in traffic. Drivers pitting earlier than me helped me to climb even further up the order to the point where when I finally left the pits on new intermediate tyres, I exited behind only the race leader George Russell. Somehow Russell kept first place and I know he's a good driver and it's wet and it's tricky to pass at the Hungara ring but that is still some going. I passed him no problem since I had the blatant car and engine advantage. That should have been it and whilst the track drying up suddenly meant I was no longer the quickest, I was quick enough to keep track position. Both Aiken and Sainz were tired as Aiken suddenly slowed mid-corner while Sainz was behind. The McLaren driver was caught out and smashed straight into the back of the racing point and lost a wheel. Jack Aiken retired shortly after but his car had clearly already given up the ghost just before that crash. George Russell and Alfa Romeo threw away what would have been a near certain and totally unexpected second place as he was one of the few drivers to pit for a second set of dry tyres before the end of the race. That meant Leclerc took second, a factor which is only slightly less unexplainable, with Hamilton in third. Then it's Perez and Stroll which makes sense but Ocon and the other Ferrari was sick somehow. Russell still crossed the line in ninth despite the extra stop, which is still a fantastic achievement, even if it is one here and off the back of a very dodgy qualifying session. Let's just break this down. Before the Grand Prix, the idea of Russell being up at the front would have been laughable. He was then doing well up at the front, pitted unnecessarily and in doing so, he ended the race in ninth. Fundamentally, that's how the Sakir Grand Prix played out for him in real life even if the specific details are different. Ragunathan finished in 15th after doing absolutely nothing that race. Yes, he gained two places, but had Aiken and Sainz not retired, Ragunathan would have finished in exactly the position he started, 17th. The second to last race I took part in was the Belgian Grand Prix and this one I can summarise very quickly. Firstly, I had a reasonably worn engine which was replaced in time for the race but not qualifying so, in qualifying I had to run with a down on power engine at Spa of all places. That's my excuse as to why I was the fifth fastest in qualifying, just over a quarter of a second off of pole but I did still beat Kvyat. I don't know what Ragunathan's excuse is though as he was 18th and 1.5 one and seconds off the pace. On the opening lap of the race, Carlos Sainz spun out at the top of Radion after running alongside Max Verstappen. I don't actually think it was contact between the two that caused Sainz to spin out and crash into the barrier, retiring from the second race in a row. A grid penalty for Raguna for meant he started from dead last and boy did he struggle to make up ground, even with the massive power advantage we have over most teams, especially the Ferrari powered ones. So we had this totally unthinkable scenario where Mahavir Ragunathan and Charles Leclerc were in last and second to last, or to put that another way, that's the worst driver in F1 versus the third best, yet they're both at the back and even though Ragunathan's got a much better car, he still couldn't get close to passing Leclerc. The pit stops didn't help Ragunathan at all as he filtered out into last with both Haas drivers still ahead of him. Thankfully, down the Kemmel straight he passed Zhao to get out of last place, although Ragunathan had DRS whereas Zhao didn't, which obviously helped a lot. One thing Ragunathan did which was smart was pit for medium tyres, whereas the two Haas drivers opted for hards, probably due to the fact the Haas car has fewer tyre wear upgrades than ours. Undoubtedly the quicker tyres helped Ragunathan catch up to the second Haas driver of Seti Camera and again the advantage of DRS helped him to make an overtake which I seriously doubt he could have done otherwise. 
Ragunathan did beat Leclerc, but that's only because the Ferrari driver was caught out by a slow-moving Giovinazzi. It's a crash and double retirement, very similar to what we saw in the Hungarian Grand Prix between Sainz and Aiken, but also it's weirdly a retirement for Giovinazzi at Spa in exactly the same part of the track where he retired in 2020 in real life. That gifted Ragunathan two more positions before one final place came, as he passed the Williams, this time not De Vries but Matsushita, with the aid of DRS and by being on the medium compound tyres over the hards. That's it. I recovered a third as both Nicholas Latifi for Renault and race winner Lance Stroll for Alpha Tauri got the better of me, but it doesn't really matter how well I did to be honest, I'm just there as a reference and reasonable benchmark to compare Ragunathan to. I was third and he was 16th in the end, although factoring out retirements, he would have been 19th. Also in the second half of the race, I was lapping constantly in the 1 minute 40s and got down once to a 1 minute 39.8. Ragunathan meanwhile was in the 142s and at the end dipped into the 141s. The fifth and final race I took part in in this 10 race season was the Italian Grand Prix and long the short of it I took pole position and won. That's the standard and then you compare that to Ragunathan who in qualifying was 16th. Following on from a comparatively good qualifying session was a promising race start, as he passed Esteban Ocon at the exit of the Retafilio chicane to move up to 15th. That's just the start of it, as later on in the first lap, Ragunathan did the first genuinely impressive thing he's done since the Dutch Grand Prix. He passed Leclerc and Verstappen at the same time as he outbroke the pair of them into Parabolica. First lap or not, quicker car or not, that is genuinely impressive. You've just witnessed Ragunathan overtake two of the best drivers in F1 at the same time. A few laps later, he went toe-to-toe -to -toe with Mick Schumacher in the racing point and came out on top. That's 12th place now for Ragunathan, four places higher up than he started, and he's had to pass some of the biggest names in F1 to get there. The problem was, once he passed Schumacher, he was in no man's land, more than a second behind the cars in front, and so he had no DRS. That's actually a fair excuse as to why he then held up a train of cars, as whilst that car he's got is more than capable of catching up to Kimi Raikkonen in the Mercedes, to be fair, not having DRS at Monza does put you at a bit of a disadvantage. But then, Mahavir in the most typical and predictable way possible, crashed out of the Italian Grand Prix all by himself. There wasn't any dirty air or really that much pressure from behind, he just lost it. At the exit of the Ascari chicane, fishtailed as he tried to correct it and ended up spearing off the circuit and head on into the barrier. He nearly took Mick Schumacher out with him, but Mick's car failed on him later in the race anyway and they were the only two drivers to retire. On one hand, it's a shame we never saw how well Ragunathan could have done at Monza since he could possibly have scored points for the third time this season, but then again, I think this right here encapsulates his season perfectly. Promising start, dreary middle, followed by a hilariously bad ending, and it's an entirely self-inflicted mistake. That's about it, although I should say he finished 14th in the simulated Russian Grand Prix and 20th in Abu Dhabi. We're talking 11 championship points total for Ragunathan, and I gave him almost the best shot possible. I won the Drivers' Championship whilst Ragunathan ended 15th in the standings. However, PSL Racing only won the Constructors' Championship by 9 points over Alpha Tauri, meaning Without Ragunathan's 11 points, we wouldn't have retained the Constructors' Championship for the 7th straight season. So I guess I should thank Ragunathan for that, but honestly, I don't feel as if I should. I mean, I gave him the best car in Formula 1 with a team with maxed out facilities, and the only time his pace was even remotely acceptable was during the Dutch Grand Prix. And even then, that's only because a pre-season activity boosted all of his stats by 10. Outside of that, he was lucky at best, 
and totally incompetent at worst. But then again, is any one of us really surprised by that statement?